If you've ever found yourself arguing about what a good man or a real man is, take a walk with me. This is where we find ourselves talking about the proverbial table and what we bring to it. And of course, when somebody asks you what you bring to the table, you get defensive because you know there's more that you could be bringing. You haven't become what you're capable of becoming yet. Maybe you're still in school and you haven't built the skills or abilities yet to have the life that you actually want. You're still very much in the building stage and there's no shame in that. And if we're being real, you haven't even processed or assessed where you came from yet. So you don't know all about your limitations that you speak over yourself daily. And what a gift you give yourself and others when you watch videos like this and you begin to realize and wake up to the fact that there's so much for you to learn. You don't know what you don't know. I was watching a video this morning with Simon Squibb and the young man asked him, I just need somebody to tell me what I don't know. And of course, Simon's like, well, I, I don't know what you don't know. It's important to realize that you're always in a place of becoming and what you become is up to you. And it takes learning, growing, developing and evolving. And that's a lifetime's worth. And I want you to know that you're not behind. You're always right on time. Maybe you're someone in your 30s and you're beating yourself up right now because you're on your second career. You haven't learned yet that failure only exists when you give up. So don't give up. It just goes back to you don't know what you don't know. So each time you have a failure, you get to this place where you get to learn something new about yourself and your process. You get the opportunity to hone that process and make it better, more streamlined. And it's in that process that you get better. You become more mature, more capable, confident, and competent. And of course, when you choose to bet on yourself and take a chance on yourself, you become more resilient. You create the capacity for constant change. This makes you emotionally strong and with a greater tenacity for life. You begin to realize that no matter what happens in your life, you're always going to be okay. And it's because you've learned to trust yourself. You know that no matter what happens, you're going to be capable of recovering from that scenario. You also end up being the type of person that will do all the things that others just won't do. You can think back to when you first started that new job and somebody told you, hey man, you're doing too much. You need to slow down. Yeah, okay guy, how'd his life turn out? If you're only ever into something for a paycheck and you're not willing to self-educate, you will suffer for the rest of your life. Once again, you don't know what you don't know and it's up to you to figure that out. And when you're willing to do what others won't do within reason and you stop following the ways of the world, you begin to realize that your life gets a lot better. All the energy that gets put into your suffering and asking why me, you begin to channel that into who you're becoming, who you're capable of becoming. If you're over 40, congratulations, you made it, but you're still not done yet. You're awake now and you get to take all the knowledge and experience that you've gained over the past 40 or 50 years and create something sustainable for yourself. And when you realize that the first 30 years of your life were spent learning, growing, expanding, developing, evolving and trying to become the adult that you thought that your parents were, you begin to recognize that you're still very early in your process. So when you choose to transition into something new in your 40s, it's not a midlife crisis and you didn't fail. It's an opportunity for growth. It's an awakening. The biggest difference being you get to move at a much faster pace. And when we talk about relationships from this perspective, you suffer because you were never willing to go all in. Or you did all the things that you knew you were capable of doing to get the relationship, and then you stopped once you had it. And I know a lot of the talk out there right now is about showing up 50-50. It's an even split. But those people, when you talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, are miserable in their relationships. You have to be willing to use the language of a shared mission and vision. Each one of you has to know who you are, where you're going, what you're doing, and the why behind why you're doing it. You should have a one, three, five, and ten year plan of what you're going to create and co-create together. Many of you are asking, what can I get from this person instead of, what am I willing to give? We should be holding each other accountable each and every day. 
and be willing to step in and pick up the slack when our partner needs us to. And this is where somebody usually goes, it goes both ways. Yeah, it does. And it also doesn't need to be said. It's just understood. Being with your partner is a conscious choice that you make each and every day. If and when temptation presents itself, you don't allow yourself to be swayed by others. And if you're looking for some new reading material, you can get the book, The Value of Others by Orion Terabon. This isn't an ad. I'm just giving you a resource that I think will help you shift your perspective.